Hi, welcome to THR Presents. I'm Corey Murray with The Hollywood Reporter, and it is my pleasure to speak with the groovy creatives behind the Paramount Plus series, Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. I'm happy to be chatting with the director and EP, Alethea Jones, choreographer, Jamal Sims, costume designer, Samantha Hawkins, and casting directors, Conrad Wolf and Leanne Smith. So before we get started, I wanted to shout out the marketing geniuses because I just happened to be riding along Sunset when I saw that Mel's Diner had transformed into the Frosty Palace and I was able to pick up these. I brought a prop today, Ruby glasses. <laughs> nice. Wow. So <laughs> the way the Pink Ladies launched was phenomenal. But let's take it back to what were you all's first experiences with Grease, the original? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm Australian. And actually, Olivia Newton-John lived in my hometown in regional Australia. So we would see her at the local supermarket shopping. Mum would be like, there's Olivia. And I'd be like, what, where? Uh, and so like we, in my town especially, we loved Greece. We had a real fever for Greece. I, I saw it when I was about five years old. Uh, everybody had a videotape of it, but, but we sort of really all uh, felt especially connected because of that Olivia bond. I saw it when I saw it in the theater. So I saw it when I was seven in the theater and we lived in an apartment complex that was right across the street from the movie theater. So the deal was when I first saw it, like I loved the movie that on Friday, if I passed my spelling test, I could go see Grease. So uh, I, that was my, every Friday I was like, oh, please let me pass this test so I can get in the theater. So that was like my love affair, like loved it from the very beginning. And yeah, still one of my favorites today. Oh, I just, uh, I saw, I didn't see it till I was like 14. And honestly, I was like mildly unimpressed. I think the like little feminist in me at the time was like, uh, like uncomfortable with the ending, but then like watching it again as adult, I picked up on so much, like many wonderful things that I had missed as a kid. But yeah, it like, it didn't have a childhood spot in my heart for some reason um but i've really like come to love it um in prepping for the show and even watching it again after doing the show there's so much more i picked up on again which was really cool yeah i think for me i was such a musical theater nerd as a kid uh that i think it's such an early formative memory uh i have a lot of memories of sleepovers and watching grease with friends and you know um, reenacting the songs and the, you know, the scenes in Frenchie's room. So it definitely has a special place in my heart from way, way back. Yeah. I sort of like Leanne, I think, uh, I first saw it at a birthday party, a friend's birthday party. And just like the scale of the movie and the story and the ensemble, I mean, particularly the end, like both Sandy's transformation and you're the one that I want just the massive, dance and just you know the scene with cha-cha like all of the the way the dresses move like I think I was just so in love I think I was also in love with John Travolta but I found that out <laughs> a little bit later but um it uh yeah it just factored really heavily and then obviously continued on Grease 2 and you know really appreciating the performances sort of like Sam was saying as as I got older and Stocker Channing and just an important piece I've actually heard some Twitter chatter that Grease 2 is almost better than Grease 1, but I've never seen it. So uh, I know that that's, <laughs> we can <laughs> debate that later. <laughs> so Alethea, what was the inspiration to go back to Greece and kind of look at the beginnings of the Pink Ladies? Great question. Um, well, I came on board once the Pink Ladies idea had already uh, taken seed, but I can speak for Annabelle Oaks, who can't be here today because of the writer's strike. She's honoring the strike and we all uh, are in support of the WGA and their strike as well. But Annabelle always talks about how uh, she was approached by Paramount Television and Paramount Plus to see if she had any ideas for Greece. They had the property Greece and uh, they, they didn't, they were like, what? 
what area would you play in? And Annabelle says, and she says this a lot. She says she remembers saying, you know, just saying, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit busy at the moment. But really deep down, she felt, she wondered if it, so she was like, this still, Greece doesn't need to be remade. This kind of feels like a money grab. Like, uh, and um, she, she jokes with the executives a lot about that now. So they, they all know. But then uh, she, a couple of days later, she was driving, she was in the back of a taxi and she started to wonder about the pink ladies. She was like, you know, that's a story that's interesting. I wonder if there were pink ladies. And she did some research and it turns out the pink ladies existed in the 1950s, an actual girl gang. And it it reached like numbers of 50 at at this high school. And so that interested her. And and that's when she was like, that's a story I want to tell. I want to hear more about. So that's how it happened. So Conrad and Leanne, you guys had the challenge, but also the great job of casting. And one of the big things that we've all noticed in watching this series is the diversity is now there that wasn't in Greece. So tell us about the audition process was, I mean, you not only had to find new faces, but also uh, people who could dance and sing. So was it like uh, auditioning for American Idol? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Was it like auditioning for American Idol? In certain ways, it only really only in the way that we were really looking for, we were blessed to have the license to find undiscovered talent, talent that hadn't really had a shot yet, um, both because of the age range, because we were looking for young people, and because we didn't want, it was already, Reese was such a huge property name, it's such a huge IP, and people have so much association with it, as you could tell from our first answers alone, but everyone has a relationship to Greece. And so we really wanted, Annabelle really wanted um, fresh faces, fresh ideas that didn't come with additional baggage for any sort of audience. And she had really developed these characters even before we got involved. She had really clear points of view for them while still being willing to be flexible for the right actor, you know, and make sure that everything gelled. But she wanted to shine a light on these people who existed. I mean, like Alethea said, the Pink Ladies were real. And as much as everyone loves the original Greece, it's not a textbook. It's not, you know, a history lesson. There was more diversity in real life in Southern California at that time. And, you know, Alethea and her writer's room did a lot of research and looked into the demographics and wanted to make sure the people who weren't necessarily didn't have a spotlight on them in the late seventies when the original Greece was made, you know, were represented. Right. I think it was important to us um, that there was that context and that Annabelle had done the, the research to sort of be able to back why these characters were written the way that they were. And we, as you know, Conrad and I feel really strongly about equity inclusion and inclusion, you know, in general, but always with a, a reason behind it. Um, and that was so clear to us from the beginning that um, it helped our audition process a lot. And the process itself, you know, in terms of the triple threat of it all, um, was extra challenging because we cast this entire show over Zoom. So we were in peak COVID. And so nobody met any of these actors in person until they got to Vancouver, right, Alethea? Jamal, right? Yeah. So it was, um, you know, a multi layer many month long process for these actors to show us their skills in all of those areas in a way that was kind of new for all of us. Um, but we, we just felt so lucky to have such a supportive team along the way. And everyone was so game to make it happen. However, we had to make it happen. And we got really lucky with all these kids. So. Oh, wow. Auditions over zoom. That must've been exciting. (laughs) What, um, now for you, Samantha, because one of the things that I personally love about Pink Ladies is the look and feel of it, uh, because I think you guys have captured it so well. But I was reading that it was a little challenging because there's not a lot of images of what diverse people or diversity looked like back in the 50s. So tell us about how you really had to do a lot of more deep digging to make sure that these characters look how they did back in 1954? I mean, it's out there. You can find it. It might not be as much um, as what you're used to, but you just have to go a little bit further, I think, than you're used to. Um, and But it's it's out there. Like, 
they, you know, they existed. There's photos of them. They're like, it's, yeah, it's there. Um, so it was actually really exciting to like have the opportunity to do that and the drive to do that. Um, and I mean, too, like the clothing difference isn't that wide, you know, like you can use research, but it was like important to me, um, for the lookbooks for each character to show their diversity in the lookbooks and not just have a bunch of photos of white people. Um, so that was really fun as well. And like, I think the most fun was the greasers because those are like, obviously that, um, started in the non-white community. It started in like the Latin X community. Um, and it was just really fun to like discover all of that. Wow. I just learned some, I didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah. And Jamal, you know, one popular thing or one great thing about Greece is the music, is the choreography. Uh, did you have enormous pressure to get it right with your take on it or did, were you just having fun? Um, yeah, no, I had enormous pressure. Uh, <laughs> no, because honestly, um, the the choreography in the original Greece uh, is just iconic. You know, people know these, the dance steps, they know all of this, the hand jive, everything is, it, it's there. It's, um, and so I, I had to release it though. I had to release the pressure off myself because um, I, I, I was in love with Patricia Birch, her, her choreography from the original. She directed the second one. And um, so I just really wanted to pay homage to her. You know, I wanted to make sure that we that it felt like Greece, but then also I wanted to bring um, some of the stuff that I know about the way, um, you know, the youth dances, even today with the musicality, you know, so we were able to push it and, and give kind of the Greece swag, but also, you know, kind of build up, build on it and push it. And that's one of the things that Alethea and, um, Annabelle really supported was, you know, let's, let's swing big. Let's not do what we've, what we've done before, you know? And so, um, yeah, it just kind of freed me up at that point. And I was like, okay, let's go. For each of your respective roles and how you, you know, help shape this series, what was important for you to either push the envelope from what Greece did or either course correct what Greece and Greece two did? Like what was your personal pride and what you wanted to bring to the series? For me, uh, I, I I never wanted to go past or I improve on what Greece did from a performance perspective. I we love what Randall Kleiser, the director of Greece One, and what Patricia Birch did. We spoke about them a lot. They're like deities to us. We think they did a slam dunk in terms of performance and craft. So I was really, really excited and I'm really proud of the level of performance, the specificity. Specificity was a word I always used. If you look at our background artists, our ensemble of dancers that Jamal was so hands-on with, look at what Samantha Hawkins did with costumes, Spe specificity and individuality. Like there's, it's just like rippling with life. And I'm most proud of, of that. Um, and that's what the movie did. Uh, so I love that. Where I'm, where where I am proud of of moving forward is, um, you know, just going back a little bit. When I was a little girl watching Technicolor musicals, I used to pause the screen in a big ensemble and just be like, "That girl at the back on the left is me." Like the girl in the polka dots. No, no, no. I love the girl with the love with the love hearts on her. Like I could pause and I could see myself, right? And and I watch one girl do a whole dance, and maybe she had a different kind of hair. Or, or like a different color or something. Maybe there was a bookish girl that I was infatuated with. I just want like, so in terms of what I'm proud of is that is the diversity and the storytelling. I think every person should be able to pause the screen and see themselves and enjoy a reflection of themselves. And I'm really proud of that. And that's something we focused on. And that's something that Technicolor musicals never got right in the past. And, and it's a great, to our great shame that people couldn't see themselves up there. No, definitely. Let's go to you, Samantha. Um, I think for me, I'm most proud of like the character creation with the costumes. I feel like a lot of times um, with musicals and like huge shows like this, you especially period ones, uh, there's this like sort of desire to just have period costumes and everything looks good. And I felt like I was really able to dive in and get to the like individuality of each character and show who they are. Um, and then also just like 
the playfulness of the 50s and like bringing that out. I think some people don't realize like, because so many photos are black and white, you kind of don't think of like the color and the texture and the wild things they did. Like Nancy's dress in 108 is that's from like with her face all over it, that is pulled from a research image from 1947. Like someone made that in 47 and we just sort of took that and ran with it and did like something similar. So it's just really fun, like finding those things and opening people's eyes to like what was going on in the fifties and what people were wearing in a really fun way. What about you, Jamal? Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of being able to capture the joy and the excitement that the, the Greece one and two had, because sometimes we forget like why, like why these numbers are so infectious and also, uh, ultimately it's because of the joy that that's on screen and our actors and our dancers, everybody brought every time. I mean, we were uh, shooting in, um, you know, not perfect conditions. It was cold. It was raining sometimes, you know, and everybody was committed to making sure that, you know, it, the drive in looked like it was a summer night and it was a cold, you know, we're really in reality, we were freezing. And so I think that that was like the thing that I'm most proud of because it wasn't a, an easy thing to do. And because everybody loved what we were doing, they just brought their A game. And um, yeah, so um, I, I love that. You know, I think in addition to what everyone has already said, I think I'm really proud of our actors because for so many of them, it was their first big job. I mean, for pretty much for all of them, it was their first big job, you know, especially our young actors. Um, and Conrad and I were lucky enough to go visit set during the production process. And we were so, you know, touched that every crew member that we came in contact with from the transportation folks to the folks at Crafty, you know, um, to the guy who holds the boom microphone commented on how gracious and kind and respectful and professional these young actors were in what was an incredibly rigorous, challenging, physical, mental, emotional process. Um, you know, that, that part of it really, you know, makes us proud, um, because it is a big deal to us that these people, um, the people that we cast operate as human beings in a really, um, in, in, with a lot of integrity and I'm proud of them for that. Yeah. I think, sort of definitely echoing that and and what Alethea said in terms of we we entered the process, the audition process that searched for this huge ensemble, but particularly the four pink ladies, you know, we would say, I mean, so many times as part of that process, big grease energy. We were looking for big grease energy, you know, trying to capture that heightened, you know, campiness, but also at the same time, because it's it's balanced so well, particularly in, in the first Greece, you know, Annabelle was the first to say, you know, we should use Rizzo, we should use Stocker Channing as our North Star, you know, because she under, she existed in that universe, it was big, but it was so grounded in truth. It was so grounded in something real, in real emotion. And that's what Annabelle and Alethea and the rest of the team ultimately wanted to bring in to this huge ensemble, to these 10 episodes. And so I'm really proud that we were able to find performers, young performers who were able to capture that. And, and like I said before, you know, that we were able to expand on what those what Greece one and Greece two did in terms of diversity and really showing what, you know, more of what Southern California actually looked like at that time. And, and I think that adds to the message. I think it adds to the joy, like Jamal said, I think, you know, that people like Alethea said are able to pause it or watch these big numbers and be like, Oh my God, that's me. And, and just sort of, again, not that it should be taken as a history lesson. It's not, we're not trying to be didactic or like, trying to teach you something, but it's real. It's more real and it's still fun. And that we were able to create these stories that are based in truth, that have more diversity, that aren't, you know, weighed down with like, you know, the diverse characters are only dealing with racism or only dealing with, you know, prejudice, that there's still joy, that there's still love, that there's still, you know, fun high school energy big grease energy, you know, that we're really proud of that. 
I even I appreciated the Hazel character uh, because I fall into this category. So forgive me, Jamal, but I'm not the greatest dancer. But you know, she was a little shy. But I, you know, but she did the hand jive, which you know I know it was a nod to Black culture. But I love that that was incorporated. Like she was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not out here cutting a rug, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> you know. But we saw, you know, she did know how to flex a bit uh, at the in the finale. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> She held back just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. Um, so this is another question for everyone, because for me, uh, Nancy, I really, really loved Nancy's character. Um, and for, and she had the perfect line that I thought kind of summed up the first season when she was like, I'm not normal and I don't want to be in this life or in, and or in love. Um, so for each of you, and uh, we can go back to you, Conrad, to start off, but like, what character did you relate to the most, either with their growth story or their character development? Like who uh, sits in your heart a bit um, for the, after this after this first season? Oh, gosh, uh, I love them all so much. So that's a really difficult question. I think just because of, you know, my own experience, I, I think Ari, Cynthia, um, I think all of the pinks are trying to find their place. They find each other because of their differences and because they feel like outsiders. That's the that's the main message of of the show and the season. But you know, particularly Ari, who doesn't quite know, I should say Cynthia, who doesn't quite know, you know, where they fit in, you know, not boy enough for you know, the boys, not girl enough for the girls and like existing in this sort of in between. And it, you know, it wasn't until, you know, in my own experience, it wasn't until I was in my twenties that I really found my people and was able to like really ground myself in like finding out what I liked, who I liked, what I wanted to do with my self and my life. And so I guess I relate to, to Cynthia's journey in particular. Lithia? I I always say I'm I'm Nancy with a Cynthia rising. Uh Nancy, I I I love how yeah, how defiantly herself she is. Unapo she's unapologetically herself and uh in my inner interior world I was that in high school with my closest friends and she's also aspirational for me because I probably could have gone further in high school by just being unapologetically myself. So I just I find her aspirational in that respect. And Cynthia um, I'm, I'm not queer, but I just really appreciate Cynthia's, um, sense of humor and, uh, and again, just the, the defiant nature to, to not sort of not color within the lines and, and to push things. I, I, I really, I'm inspired by Cynthia as well. You know, I think I have a little bit of all the pinks, um, in me, but I'm going to go with Frenchie actually, because it really stands out to me that, you know, Madison Lagaris, who plays Frenchie so beautifully, has this little monologue where she's like, everybody made fun of me for how much I talked and how loud I talked and how I sounded when I talked. And this was very much me as a kid. You know, I sort of always got told I was too much. Um, and this, this, I found this friend who accepted me as I was and stood up for me and, and you know, um, and I'm going to make her stay my friend because that's valuable to me. You know, I think that that, um, that's a really important, you know, part of my story in being comfortable in my own skin and um, allowing others to embrace me exactly as I am. And I think that that's sort of what Frenchie's starting to go through at this point. Um, I feel like I have like two. I'm a transition from like Hazel to Nancy. I in high school I was very much a Hazel and quiet and shy and didn't think that you know I had much to say or offer, I think. And then I sort of pulled myself into a <laughs> Nancy mindset. And I really appreciate them both for that. And I think as Alethea said, Nancy's very aspirational and not that being Hazel is bad, but I think it's, you know, like it's a common um, thing we can, a lot of us can relate to of like being a little bit more quiet and unsure of ourselves. And so I love them both for that and showing everyone that both of those things are fine and lovely and, but you can do whatever you want. How about you, Jamal? Um, I'm going to have to say um, uh, Cynthia with a Jane rising. I'll take that from Alethea. Um, because 
you know, I grew up in Rancho Cucamonga, which was predominantly a white neighborhood. Um, there was maybe like a handful of, of black people, maybe 20 in in my class, my ninth grade class, you know? And um, I just remember wanting um, just to have my first kiss, but I knew I wanted to kiss a, a, a guy, you know, I was queer. So I knew that from early age, but I had to fake it. And then also, but at the same time, I wanted to be perfect, kind of like Jane, like, you know, you know, I, was, I wanted to be the class president. I wanted to be the homecoming king. I wanted to do all these things, but I also knew that there was more. I knew that I, you know, that there was more than just Rancho Cucamonga. I knew that, you know, that I could actually offer more. So, I mean, I, I'm a mix of the two, Cynthia, and because I, you know, I had the courage to be who I was, but not all the way, you know what I mean? And I would only go to a certain certain spot and then I would back down. So high school for me was a mess, um, but, uh, but ultimately, um, you know, I just had the belief in myself that there was more out there and I, I love Jane's ambition. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, all right. Uh, well, before we wrap up, I want to thank you all for this wonderful conversation that we had. Congratulations on the first series. The way it ended, I'm very curious to see who is Zuko. I'm excited. Uh, but also, I need to know, are you guys going back on any of the picket lines and doing the choreography? Because you all went viral. <laughs> And where and where can we go and join in? Yes, Please. we are. We are going out. We we try to we, we've been trying to like figure out how we can all get together and do a grease or a big grease one. So I think it's not this week, but it's going to be the next week that we're going to all go out there and support. All right. Yes. Congratulations to the first series. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you, Corey.